Uh, Father God, we just thank you again for this opportunity, Father, to gather. You're just awesome. And uh, we know that you are in control of all things, Father. We just thank you for that because, you know, if it weren't for your control, we'd probably be out of control. And thank you that uh, you're keeping us steadfast and moving forward, Father, in this in this world of uh, distraction. And and uh, we just thank you. And we praise you and give you all glory in the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we are in Galatians. And uh, last week, last week, I'm going to basically do a little um, a little rundown of whatever. Last week, we covered that Paul, this is, that's when Paul's ministry got started. He shared with the Galatians when his ministry got started. Right? And, and, uh, and that this message came not from the apostles. He got it straight from Christ. Now this is our risen Lord. This is the Lord, the Lord of Galatians. Uh, we're going to be in chapter two, but I'm I'm just recapping chapter one. Okay, so basically Paul shared, you know, this message of salvation by grace. I received it from Christ, from no one else but Christ. And that's this is basically he's basically sharing with the Galatians and sharing with us when his ministry got started. Now we know that that uh, in, in Acts chapter nine he got saved. He got converted. All right, and and this is this is what happens. He's sharing with us what happened after his conversion. You know, he went he went right away to to uh, to Antioch and he started sharing with the the Jews that you know Jesus Christ is is who he says he is. He's the Messiah. He's you know what I'm saying. And then they sent him away, and he goes back to uh, he goes back to um, Arabia. I believe he went back to the mountain of God, you know, to our Lord, who was God at the time. And I believe that he spent he. he he spent three years. I don't believe. I believe it says that then after three years, he spent three years with our Lord learning this message. Now, we're going to start chapter 2. Chapter 2 is very important because chapter 2 shares with us where the division started between the two churches. Now, there was two different churches at the time. There was the Messianic church, which belonged to the apostles, and then Paul's church, which belonged to the Gentiles. Now, they're, they're both, they were both, both part of the church of God. Now, okay, One under the law, the other one under grace, all right? For a purpose now. Uh, the, the, the apostles were to go after the nation of Israel and convince them that Jesus was their Messiah. And Paul's mission was just to go out and save the Gentiles and, and, and believe that what Christ did for them. That, that was his mission. Two different missions. Now, now Paul's going to share with us because this is where the confusion starts, which has gone on for the last 2,000 years about well, do we live under the law or do we not live under the law? We do not live under the law. The new Christian church did not live under the law. And and, and Paul's going to share it with us here. And we're going to jump back to Acts chapter 15 here in a few. All right, because I want you guys to comprehend that they had a meeting. They got together. Paul went and had a meeting with the apostles. Let's start chapter 2 real quick. Okay. Now, this is Paul sharing with us. He says, now, then 14 years after I went up to again to Jerusalem, with Barnabas and took Titus also. Now he shared with us. Now this is 14 years after his ministry has started now. So he shared with the Galatians. Listen, 14 years ago, I went, all right, I went and I spoke to the apostles. We had a meeting, okay? So he said, now uh, verse 2, and I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. Now he says, now, now he shared with us that 14 years ago he went and he shared this gospel that he's sharing with the with the Galatians right now. Okay. Now he says, but privately to them which were of reputation, these by any means I should run or had run in vain. In other words, what he's saying is, this was given to me. This message of grace was given to me, and I was called to take it and run with it. And I now I had to go and share with the apostles that I this was not I didn't do it. Of, of my own will. It was by the will of God. I was sent. So he so he's going to he's going to go share now. Now we're going to cover that here in a bit. He says he says he says um, but neither Titus who was with me being a Greek was compelled to be circumcised. Alright? Now now he says and because of the false brothers unaware brought in who came in privately to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that we might, that they might bring us into bondage. All right. Now he says, to whom we gave place by subjection. No, we didn't. Not for an hour. So what he's saying is we didn't, 
We didn't listen to their message. We told them, we're not paying attention to this message, okay? We we are saved by grace. We're no longer under the law. Now, what did he say about, about liberty? We're set free from, from, from the law. The law, the, the law of Moses, well, the law. What's the difference between the law and the precepts of, precepts of God? The law, the law, what did it say there? It puts you in bondage. That's the law. Now, precepts, that goes again, that goes back to the Old Testament, and that goes back to the law. All right? We're saved by grace. We have to do nothing. We don't have to do anything but believe in what Christ did. That's the difference. But then, now, what does Paul say? Going back into the law, what puts us in what? Bondage. Because now you're doing something that you don't have to do. Why do it if you don't have to do it? But we do have to do something. No, not for your salvation, you don't. And that's, okay, this is, for that's what Paul says. We have to accept it. It's a gift from God. We have to yeah, well, and we have to do that every day. Well, the, 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 well, and that's the thing. You you do your best. I mean, it's you do your best to live it every day. We all do. Because, see, we're still flooding, struggling with this flesh. This flesh sometimes doesn't want to give in. Yeah, so we have to take that flesh into, into but that subjection. Says that we have been transformed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom yes, of light. Yes, that's our that's our nature, Mom. That's, that's that's our that's our soul and our spirit. This flesh hasn't gotten there yet. We're still here on earth. And until we die, this flesh is still connected to this earth. So so we're still we're good with God, but we this flesh wants to run off and do other things. Now, now Paul shared with us. Now, what did he say there? He says now he says here, and and that because of false brothers now unaware brought in, who came in privately to spy out our liberty. Now we have liberty. We're we're saved by grace. And so if, if we're saved by grace, we're liberated from anything that we have to do. Circumcision. Uh, now they're talking about circumcision because now I'm going to, I'm going to cover that here in a little bit. All right, when, when we go, when we go, when we go to Acts, because I want you to see what's going on. Now, now Paul is telling us that he now. So he says here, who we can place? We we didn't listen to over an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Now he's telling the the Gentiles this gospel of grace is going to continue with us. We're just like the Gentiles. We're saved by grace, so we should be preaching grace. We should say, hey. You're free. Once you believe in what Christ did, you're free from anything. You don't have to do any kind of circumcising, no uh, 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 sacrifice, now, no living under the law. Now, they're talking about the law. The law puts you in, what, is he, what does he say again? He says, privately, try out the, our liberty which was in Christ, that they might bring us into bondage. Now, he, he, said, he said right before that, he said, now, but... Neither Titus, who was with me, being Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. All right? And then, okay, now, now, now I want to jump over. Let's jump over to Acts real quick. Acts chapter 15, because I want you to truly comprehend what was going well, not, on in not too long ago, Paul's ministry. Was still being circumcision when you guys were born and you were circumcised. Yeah, but that's not of the law, though. <laughs> circumcision now is a choice. When, when, when a child is born, the parents have a choice to circumcise the child or not. That has nothing to do with religion anymore. Yeah. The Jews still have to do it. Huh? The Jews have to do it. Well, the, yeah, the Jews still have to do it. The Jews still circumcise. Because why? Because, because they still practice the law. Now, that's what we're going to get to in chapter 15. Because we want to comprehend that Paul is trying to say, we don't practice the law. We don't have to. So we don't have to be circumcised. We don't have to do anything for our for our salvation now. We're talking salvation here now. Okay? All right? So it frees us. We're free now. Let's go to chapter. I want to go to chapter 15 in Acts. Okay? And, and my book says the debate over circumcision now. All right? Now this is going to talk about. I'm going to read through it because this is a lot to cover real quick here. Okay? Now this is, lot, now this is very important because this is what Paul is sharing happened 14 years before he's He's written this letter to the Galatians. This is what he was, what he dealt with 14 years prior. Now, all right. Now, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna read here. Okay. Now it says here, what are you reading? At, uh, Acts chapter 15, right at the beginning there. Okay. Because <laughs> I read the whole thing and I said, man, I've got to read the whole thing because, well, not the whole chapter, but we're gonna read most of it anyway because it's a pretty big chapter. So, but I want you to comprehend that this is what Paul is sharing. He went and had a meeting. With the apostles, all right, and this is also where Peter steps in, but I'm gonna I'll share that here a little bit. Okay, he goes, he says, and certain men which came down from Judea caught the brothers and said, except they be circumcised after the manner of Moses, 
they cannot be saved. Right? Now, this is what Paul is talking about in Galatians. All right? Now, what did Paul say? There was men, brothers, false brothers, he said, that came in unaware, and they're trying to get the church, the, the new Christian church, the Christian, Christian church under grace to circumcise. Okay? So now this is this is this is Acts sharing with us what was going on. So we got the these these uh, these apostles now, and, and this is going to be shared with us. Okay, now these are apostles that are part of the Messianic Church that are going in and telling the Gentiles, no, unless you're circumcised, you can't be saved. And that's not true. We're saved by grace. We don't have to. Paul just shared with us. Titus doesn't have to be circumcised. Okay, so now we're going to continue here. Right. So verse two, when therefore Paul and Barnabas had had no small dis dissension and disputation with them. In other words, they were basically arguing. No, we don't. No, we don't have to be circumcised. They determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem and to the apostles and elders about this question. Now, all right. So the question is about living under the law. Circumcision is of the law. Okay. Now, in this day and age. Circumcision has nothing to do with the law. Circumcision is a health, it's a health thing now. All right? You know, and, and you have a choice. You can either circumcise your child or not. But it's more for health purposes now. Now, Lawrence just said the Jews are still practicing circumcision because the, the Orthodox Jews and the Messianic Jews are still living under the law. All right? And they should be living under grace because that the law ended. All right? So, so he says here now, now verse 3, and, and being brought on our way. By the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. And they caused great joy unto all the brothers. Now, so there are people that are accepting the Gentiles. Now, these are Jews accepting the Gentiles being saved, okay? Because we're supposed to be one big church. There's not supposed to be a whole bunch of different churches. We're supposed to be one Christian church, all right? Under grace, no law, okay? And when they went, and when they came to Jerusalem, they were received of the church, and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all the things that God had done with them. Now, this is Paul and Barnabas declaring the things that had happened with the Gentiles. But there rose up a certain sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it, it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. All right? So here, here the Messianic Church, which is also the Church of God at that point, is trying to get the Gentiles to continue practicing the law and what what paul say we're saved by the law okay so then he says here and the apostles and the elders came together for to consider this matter okay so they're having a meeting now and now this is this is pretty awesome here because here and then it says that when there had been much disputing peter rose up now peter is, uh, i believe that peter because peter was no longer the head of the messianic church Peter was like in retirement now. So Peter's just sitting off over in the corner. And he's listening to all these people back and forth bickering about grace and bickering about, you know, circumcision. And then and so what did he do? What does he do? He says, okay, so the spirit kind of nudges Peter, right? And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, men and brothers, you know how much that a good while ago God made me God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. All right? Now, this is Peter standing up. Because now we got, we got to go back. And I think it was like chapter 10 or something. Where chapter 10 or 11 where Peter goes to, to a Gentile family. And that's the only Gentile family Peter ever went to. Okay? Only one. Only one Gentile family. And, and the apostles even questioned him. What are you doing going to the Gentiles? We don't deal with the Gentiles. They're, they're, they're pigs. We don't, you know what I'm saying? We don't even associate with them. But Peter did what he was told. Okay? For this purpose now. For this purpose, okay? Now, now, you remember in Jesus' ministry, when he said, and he looks at Peter and he says, Upon this rock, I will build my church. All right? This is the point in time. When Peter is chosen to protect the new Christian church. All right, the Christian church of grace. Because see, now in this age, in this age of grace, we're all to come to God the same way. 
There is only one way, and that's in believing in what Christ did in his death, burial, and resurrection. That's for everybody. For every single religion in the world, that's what saves us. All right? Now, at this point, and this is what the Spirit revealed to me, which was awesome, because, you know, everybody said, and that's why I, I believe the Catholics chose Peter as their, their, their Pope. You know what I'm saying? Because they didn't quite comprehend the fact that Peter was, right then, Peter spoke up for Paul and backed Paul up, okay? So if it wasn't for him backing up Paul, Paul would have probably folded, okay, and given in, all right? But he says, and God, which knew the hearts of, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. How awesome is that? Now, therefore, now what does he say? Now, therefore, why tempt you, God? And that's what we do. When we start to practice the law again, what are we doing? We're tempting God. Why? Because we're saved by grace. So he says, now listen, now this is very important here, he says. Now, therefore, why tempt you, God, to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which, which neither our fathers nor we are able to bear? All right? Now, Peter understands that this, this law is just... A burden. And what did Paul what did Paul call it? You know, he called it going back into bondage. He said, We're free from that kind of bondage of the law. Now let's continue here because it's very important. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. All right. Now what's what's Peter saying there? Peter's saying there, we're not saved yet. All right. Because the Bible shares with us, and I, and I believe it's in the Old Testament, shares that a nation will be saved in a day when they believe in Christ, when he returns to set up their kingdom, which is what they're waiting for. The, the Jews, the Messianic Jews are waiting for that kingdom to return. And so are the so are the, the, the Orthodox Jews. They're waiting for the Messiah to show up, okay? So, okay, so let's continue here. So he says, Then all the multitude kept silent. And gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had done among the Gentiles by them. And after they had heard, after they had heard, and after they had held their peace, now James answered, saying, Men and brothers, hearken unto me. Now this shares with us, now this shares with us that James is the head of the Messianic church now. Because right? James is the one speaking now. Peter is over off in the corner, just listening. He's done. He's not the he's not the head guy anymore. When he like he used to be when he was with Jesus, he's now he's off to the side. But he saved he saved the uh, the Christian church by stepping up, and that's when I believe that Jesus said, "Upon this rock I shall build my church." All right, the true Christian church. Now, okay, all right. So then he says, and after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, "Men and brothers, hearken unto me. Simeon had declared how God." At the first did visit the Gentiles to, to take out of them a people for his for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophet, as it is written. Now he's sharing Old Testament here. After this I will return. Now he's talking about Christ. After this, now Christ says, I, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. All right, now. That hasn't happened yet. There's this anticipation of the temple being rebuilt. And it's been, I don't know, my mom used to listen to TBN when I was growing up. And I'd hear all this about, and my mom would tell me, oh, they're getting ready to build the temple and the tabernacle and all this. And here it is, I don't know, what, 40 years later. They're still building, they're still talking about, they're waiting for that temple and tabernacle to be built. Why? Because that's going to be their time of salvation, okay? Now, now this is now this is Old Testament. Now Luke wrote the book of Acts, so he Luke is sharing what James is sharing about the Old Testament. Okay, so this is exciting. And then he says that the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, says the Lord, who does all these things. Now, okay, now this is awesome because our Lord is speaking through the prophets in the Old Testament. Known unto God are all. And known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Okay? Wherefore, my sentence is now. Now, this is James saying, this is what I'm saying. All right? Now, he's talking about the Gentiles. All right? He says, wherefore, my sentence is 
that we trouble them not that we that we trouble not them. In other words, we're going to leave them alone. We're going to leave the Gentiles alone. All right, they're they're saved a different way than we are. All right, all right. Which okay, whatever. Right, my sense is that we trouble not them, which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols and from fornication and from strangled and from blood okay from moses of old for for moses at all time had in every city them which preached him being read in the synagogues every sabbath day all right now <laughs> he's saying that now, now he's sharing the old testament here now that was for the nation of israel back then okay it's not anymore. We are in the age of grace. We are in, in, in we're saved by grace now, okay? So then he says, now, the, 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 now my book says, a letter to Antioch. Because this is going, now Antioch was outside of Israel. Antioch was was a city where the true Christian church got started. Because in uh, one of the chapters, uh, in chapter 13, I think, is when they first started calling them Christians, okay? Anyway, it says here, then please that the apostles and the elders with the whole church to send chosen men of them of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed uh, Bar Bar Barsabas, and Silas, chief men among the brothers. And they wrote letters to them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brothers send greetings unto the brothers which are of Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia, okay, for as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us having troubled you, having troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying you must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandments, all right? Now, what are they saying? They're saying these men that have come into your church, and they're telling you that you have to be circumcised and you have to live under the law. We didn't allow them to do that. That had no bearing on us. So they went out of their own and, and, and caused, caused trouble in your church. And that's why Paul had to go and get things straightened out. Okay? And he did. Okay? Now it says, It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you, with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now he's talking about uh, Barnabas and Paul, and we we now Paul. We've seen what Paul went through in in, in Second Corinthians. You know, it shared right and right at the very end all the things that Paul went through. So we know Paul hazarded a lot. He went through a lot. Okay, for it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than those necessary things. That you abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which you, from which if you keep yourselves, you shall do well. Fare ye well, fare you well. Okay, now that's the letter. So, so then he says, so, so when they dismissed, they came to Antioch, and when they, when they gathered the multitude together, they delivered the, the, the epistles, or the letters, which, which when they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation. And Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, exhorted the brothers with many words and confirmed them. And after they had tarried there a space, they were let go in peace from the brothers upon the, unto the apostles. Notwithstanding, it pleased Silas to abide there still. Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. Okay, so now, now that's what Paul is talking about. Let's go back to Galatians now. Okay, now we're not gonna we're not gonna finish the whole chapter, but I want to get to this part here because this is what Paul is talking about right at the end of Galatians here, right at the right at the right, right in the middle actually, actually in the middle of the of the of the chapter here, chapter two. Okay, so we have so we finished with uh, with uh, with the words. Um, Okay, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Now, this is Paul telling the Galatians, the truth of the gospel is being, you guys are going to continue sharing this gospel. 
All right. Now those guys that came in unaware, and now we just heard the letter said that that these guys came in on their own and and try to try to uh, to to bring the, the Christian church back into bondage by circumcision, right, and by following the law of Moses. And Paul said, "No. Well, then let's go. Let's go to Jerusalem and get this." Now Paul is sharing this is history now, okay? Because it's still happening. Now think about it. This is fourteen years later, and Paul is still sharing with the Gentiles. These men that are coming from the from the apostles from the Messianic Church are not supposed to be preaching the law. They're supposed to come in, and 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 Paul, I mean, he loved his people. I mean, he loved I mean, he loved Peter because when we cover the second part of this chapter. He confronts Peter, but we'll get to that when we get there. Now, I want you to comprehend what Paul is saying here, all right? Because there was an agreement that was made 14 years ago now. He's saying, 14 years ago, we made an agreement that has not been kept by the apostles, all right? By the Messianic Church. Yeah, by other people that were coming. Well, they were, they were basically disciples of, yeah. of, of the James, apostles. Well, they were part of the same, but they were part of James. But right. James agreed that, no, they don't have to be. But the, the other one took it on their own. On their own, so right. Their, right, and that's what Paul's talking about. Yeah, right. Okay, be, but, it, but think about it. Yeah. That was 14 years prior, yeah. and Paul is talking about it's happening right now, and, Stu. And later on, Peter was kind of joining again the other side of it. Exactly, <laughs> see, because Peter was kind of, yeah, he, was was, he was afraid. He was afraid. Peter was afraid to, yeah. you know. And now think about it. <laughs> Back then, <laughs> they tried to kill Paul. They wanted to yeah. kill Paul for but, sharing this message. But Paul's reasoning was, hey, they're getting... Uh, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit is coming on them, even though they're not following the law, and that's uh, Peter's. Uh, and that's what Peter. Uh, uh, you know, right? Just that's what Peter stood up, and, and that's what Paul. Yeah. And that's what Paul shared with us. Okay, yeah. so let's 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 continue here. So he says, but of those who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it makes okay. no matter to me. We're in uh, Galatians. I know what yeah. Uh, uh, chapter six. Uh, verse six. Oh, six. Okay. okay. Right. Verse six in chapter two. Chapter two, verse six. Galatians. Okay. Now. Now he says, but of but of those who seem to be somewhat whatsoever they were, it makes no matter to me. And then and this is Paul basically saying, it doesn't matter what you know who they think they are, all right? It doesn't matter to me because God commissioned Paul for this message of grace, okay? He says, God accepts no man's person, for they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. So in other words, he's saying. They, it was Christ. Now he shared with us in the first chapter. He got his message directly from Christ, not from the apostles. Now, okay. So he said, but counterwise, but otherwise, you know, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. Now, those words can be confusing because he says the uncircumcision; those would be the Gentiles. All right. Because they didn't have to circumcise. They didn't circumcise their kids. They were they didn't do this. They didn't cut the foreskin away. All right? And then he says the circumcision. A lot of people get they get confused by those words. Now basically what Paul is saying there, but contrawise, when they saw that the gospel of the Gentiles was committed unto me, as the gospel of the Jews was committed unto Paul, for he that did effectually in Paul to the apostleship of the Jews. The same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. All right. Now they have two different ministries. And this is what Paul is sharing with us. Two different things are going on at that time. All right. Because they were to convince, the apostles were to convince the nation of Israel, the children of Israel, that Jesus was their Messiah. And he's going to come back and he's going to set up the kingdom for us. And we're going to live happily ever after. All right. Well, it hasn't happened yet. But it's going to. It hasn't happened yet, but it's going to happen. Now. Now let's continue here because this is really this is really cool here because then and then he says and when James and Cephas which is Peter and John who seemed to be pillars received the grace that was given unto me they gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship so what did they do I agree we agree to what you're saying and you guys now what does he say here now this is really cool because he says. That we should go unto the heathens or the Gentiles, and they unto the circumcision or the nation of Israel, the children of Israel. So, what did they do? They made an agreement. We agree, you go to the Gentiles, we're going to the nation of Israel. That's the agreement. But now, this is 14 years after they make this agreement, and Paul is stating 
That is working years and they're still overstepping their boundary. All right. And that's where the confusion comes in, I believe, in, in, in the churches. And then I'm going to read the, the, last, the, last, uh, the last verse for tonight. And he says, only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also have forward to do. Now, he's talking there. They raised money. They raised money for the, the Messianic church. Paul's churches would donate to the Messianic church. Now, it shares with us in Acts that, and, and there was a time when all the Messianics came together. They formed one community. They put all their money together. Well, you know, they were going broke. And, and that's what they, they, they expected Paul's churches to help take care of the Messianic church. That these people were, were you know, they were, they, were, they were going broke. You know what I'm saying? There was no, everybody had sold their land and they had to put it all together. And they were using all this money to take care of this community. But there was no funds coming in for the church, for the Messianic church. So, so basically they said, okay, we'll help. My churches will help the Messianic church to keep them above water. So that they don't starve to death. You know what I'm saying? Now we're going to stop there. And then, I want to, and then, I, then we'll continue with, with the confrontation between Peter and Paul. And, and we'll cover that uh, next week. But it's very important for us to comprehend that we are saved by grace. Paul is teaching us. And he, now he had a meeting with the big guys. You know, the big guys for the Messianic church. And they agreed. And they say it, they shook hands with the right hand to agree that Paul, your message is for the Gentiles under grace. Our message is for the Jews under the law. Cool. They're two separate entities. They're both moving in the same direction. Two separate entities, though. All right. Now, when 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 the the, the temple was destroyed, which was it was destroyed in seventy A.D., that ended the Messianic Church because they don't have any place to worship anymore. They went to temple to worship. They don't have that no more. They're still waiting. They're still waiting for that temple to be rebuilt. All right. So that's going to happen. That's all in Revelations, and when we get there, that'll be awesome. Anyway, so. Are we good? How exciting is this? <laughs> I get excited just reading it over again. Because, you know, when God revealed it to me, I was like in shock. Because I didn't know anything. I thought I knew the Word of God. I thought, oh, I know. But see, all I did was I learned. People would say stuff that was cool. I thought, oh, that sounds cool. I'll just repeat that. And that's what I would do. I would repeat what somebody else said. But after God revealed it to me, I'm like, ah, I was really talking a lot of BS. I didn't know anything. You know, and God straightened me out. He said, no, this is the truth. Now get out there and share the truth. So that's what I'm doing, sharing the truth. Now it's between you because, like I told the young man last week, everything is by revelation. Only God can reveal it to you, or you, or you, or you, like he revealed it to me. But we have to read it first for God to reveal it to us. All right? And that's what I told him last week. It's by revelation. Just like it was revealed to Paul, it's being revealed to us now. All we got to do is take it in and let the Spirit, the Spirit will, will reveal it to you because that's his job. His job, everything is spiritually discerned. This book is spiritually discerned. Without the Spirit of God, you can't learn this. You can't comprehend it. But we're saved. So we have the Spirit of God, so we have nothing to worry about. So God just reveals. Oh, wow, that's cool. This is what was going on back then. Now the grace of God is still continuing. We are in this age of grace. We all come to God the same way. We all live the same way. You don't have to practice the law. No circumcision. No, no wave offerings. I, I like to use wave offerings because they did a lot. In, in the law of Moses, if you read the law, they did a lot of wave offering stuff, you know. They would take food and they, you know, wave it and give it to God and they, you know, to their God, you know what I'm saying? They would do a lot of those things, which that's what they were called to do because they were under the law. You don't have to do those things. My, we just, my, huh? my, my understanding is if it's sin to you, it's sin, so don't do it. Right. And that's what the Jews believe, so they can't. They have to be so bad. They have to do what they're. If it's convicted them, they have to do it. But for us Gentiles, eating, you know, red meat or whatever, it's, it doesn't convict me or not getting circumcised. Or, it's not sin to us. And no. That's the way I understand right. it. And that's so exactly right. Because to, it's what, 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 yeah. because what did Peter say? Yeah. You know, why are we tempting God? Why are we, why yeah. are we? Well, they don't need pork, especially. They don't. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what I was saying. That's <laughs> well, yeah. And that's it. There's a lot of people yeah. that don't eat pork. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that don't eat pork. I'm like, and they it's sin to them. They well, can't. They, they shouldn't be eating it. Yeah, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. That was then. Yeah. It's over now. Well, I mean, now they they can eat yeah. pork, but if but they choose not to, that's okay. Like I told, like like, like Judy, Judy and I were discussing that one yeah. one night. 
And I showed a scripture, and Paul says, as long as you give thanks for what you're eating, now you can eat anything. Blessed. You can eat cockroaches, you can, because the other day we were watching it, and there was people eating all these bugs, and I'm like, you eat, how awful is that? Yeah. But, you know, you give thanks for it, God says you can pretty much eat anything. Yeah. So, as long as you give thanks. Now, if you choose not to eat it, like, you're not going to catch me eating cockroaches. I don't care how much you've cooked them. I don't care what you've dipped them in. <laughs> I, am not, I am not eating a cockroach. Being hungry, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, maybe, yeah. If I was hungry enough, maybe. So but you, at this point, I'm not that hungry. When you're hungry, maybe <laughs> and that's true. And you're right about that. But, you know, the thing is, as long as we give thanks to God, we can eat. And, and now, because we're not under the law, so we can eat for it. We can eat, we can eat grasshoppers. You can eat tarantula. You can eat whatever. As long as you give thanks for it. And that's the most important thing is that we understand and comprehend that we're no longer under the law. So we don't have to worry about it. And, and how exciting is that? Because that's freedom. Well, that's What's a, liberty. That's, it from God, right? that's liberty. Yeah, that, it all comes from God. But it's the it's the law of grace now. It's not it's not even a, it's not law, it's grace. There's no law. He's not telling you that you have to. He's saying the choice is yours. You want to eat cockroaches? Eat cockroaches. Yeah. You don't want to eat cockroaches? Don't eat cockroaches. Give thanks, you can just give. That's all I have to do. All I have to do is thank you, Father, for for uh, the tarantula you just fed me. So we have you know? to do our part too. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. We're called to, we're because we're we're, we're 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 ministers now, so we're called to get out and share this message of grace, salvation through grace, because that's the most important thing to God. He wants us to be saved. He wants every man to be saved. That's our job to lead people to salvation. That's it. And then after that, that's between them and God. Now, God will reveal the truth to them as they get into the, into his word. He'll reveal it. That's not for me or for you. God is the one who does the revealing. So, somebody want to pray something? Want to pray something? Yeah. All right. Awesome. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. We just want to thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for Holy Spirit, go and live with us, Lord Jesus. Keep us and guide us. And give us the the closer walk with you. And your Father, keep us to be obedient to your will, Lord Jesus. Not only ask, but only but do what you want to do. And do things that you ask us to do, Holy Father, because we sometimes we pray for something and then we we don't get the answer right away. We thank you for that. That we can, that you have taught us to be faithful, just like you're saying, Lord Jesus. We want our Heavenly Father to trust us just as Jesus said it so. That we could trust in your Father, your Lord God. That we could, that Jesus could be obedient and do his will to our Father. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. We thank you for the whole that you've said in your mighty name. And being called to gracious people, we begin. In Jesus' name.